Hi guys, it's June here and wherever you guys are around the world, I hope you are staying safe and feeling fabulous. Welcome back to my channel and if you are new, thank you so much for subscribing. I'm so glad that you have uh, come and uh, support this little channel of mine. Today I'm super excited because finally, 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 I get to sit down and talk to you more about the college admission scandal. So this is part two of the Varsity Blues. I am so excited, so let's get rolling. Okay, so if you guys have not watched part one, I would recommend that you check it out first. I'll put the card somewhere up here. Um, in part one, we talk a little bit about the Netflix program, Varsity Blues, the college admission scandal, and also the book We Regret to Inform You, An Overachiever's Guide to College Rejection. Um, and as you know, that topic really captured my attention. Um, Usually, I prefer to like read about something or read the book before watching the TV program or the movies. When it comes to true crime and documentaries and programs about you know conspiracy theories, um, scandals, and all that kind of thing, I tend to rely a lot more on podcasts. And um, I'm a you know I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts. Uh, as well as um, watching um, documentaries or specials on Netflix or on, on TV um, and of course also on the YouTube channel so that's where usually I get my information from when it comes to things like that. In today's episode I will be talking about guilty admissions the bribes, the favors, and the phonies by Nicole Laporte. All those people who were involved in the whole college admission scandal. The families, they are they are super, super loaded. This is crazy money. And just to give you a sense of how I guess how entitled they feel um, about this, uh, about going to college, not just any college, but entering really just the Ivy League, okay, like only the top schools. Like parents were actually suing, um, you know, suing the schools because um, their child didn't get into their school of choice. And that is really scary. It's like, I understand that the school is a place where you learn and teachers or lecturers or, or whatever are supposed to guide you and all that but then to put the entire responsibility you know uh, with the school and none on the kids themselves I, I don't know I mean what is going on like we're talking about people with crazy money if you've seen this program called Selling Sunset uh, you look at the kind of houses and the price tags uh, of these houses, you kind of know what we're talking about. And, and in the book, um, we're, you know, kind of like taken into the world of the super duper rich. And you get this idea that everything in LA is about wheeling and dealing. So nothing is off the table. So if, if there's money involved and there are favors um, to be um, asked, and um, and favors to be returned for something that was done for you earlier on or something. I mean, that is totally um, the way they get things done. So it's not, I don't know where, where does hard work and dedication come in? I, I don't know. I, I guess somewhere along the line, there is hard work, there is some dedication. But other than that, it, you know, people with money, they can sort of like cut the queue, you know, and, you know, just reduce the whole hard work process, the whole blood, sweat and tears situation by a lot. So if you have money, um, one of the um, one of the things that was mentioned in the book, a father was very upset. His second son did not uh, manage to get into Yale. Now, this father himself, he is a graduate of Yale and so is his father. Uh, first son and he was very angry because he said that well I'm a graduate of Yale my first son is a graduate of Yale and now is my second son's turn in the book it kind of tells you like Yale does not have turns you do not have a turn to enter Yale the guy behind this whole uh, scandal uh, Rick Singer um, he talks a little bit about his childhood as well so Rick Singer was a fat and bold legged child I'm not like making fun of him or anything like that. I think childhood can be really tough and I, I kind of have a feeling that this is um, what 
sort of like spurred him on to to um, try really hard to succeed. He wanted very much to be in the basketball team. He tried and tried and tried again. He just did not make it. Some of us, we get over it, okay, and that's it. But for him, it was something that really, um, I, I guess it stayed with him, you know, as he grew up. And I think he was always a little different and he did not fit in. Um, also, where he was growing up, I believe um, he was not as wealthy as the rest of the people. Despite all that, okay, the good thing about him is that he used those things that, you know, he, he did not let it um, stop him from trying to find ways to succeed in other areas uh, of his life, which is a good thing. The bad thing that I, I kind of felt that, um, that his past affected him is that he had still dealing with the insecurity and he started to become really cocky and then when he talks about certain things he, he likes to embellish it a little you know it's like he likes to name drop like I know this guy and oh I used to work for this guy I know and that is just a, I feel is a sign of someone who has um, you know sort of like is a, a little bit ashamed of their past so now they're kind of like overcompensating and, and so therefore he likes to name drop and he he likes to mention oh i've met this person or met that person but you know some of it may not be true okay another thing that he was very good at i must say um is uh he also knew that this because he he also don't forget he did um you know have um experience growing up um in an affluent neighborhood so he knows what these guys are like as well. So he kind of used that knowledge to his um, advantage and he likes to use this scare tactic when he is dealing with the parents of the kids. It, it's like, if you don't use me, you know, if you don't let me help you, your kid is just not bright enough to make it to, you know, the top schools. And it just goes to show no matter how much money you have, even these people who are so rich, um, they're still insecure. And so they were willing to pay him to ensure that the kids, you know, um, are successful in the college um, admission, like they, so that they can enter like the best school. So Singer has a very good pitch. So he had it all worked out, right? He knew how to manipulate the system. For a while, he was also like a coach, and a coach is like a one, it's like one step more than a tutor. It's just not. Um, it, it's, it's like not just telling you, okay, you need help in this subject or that subject. A coach actually, it's like he changes your life. You know, he tells you what to do and what you should become. I, I just felt that he was very smart in that sense. Yeah, so he knew that in a lot of colleges, um, coaches um, were undervalued and some of them were not as well paid as he thinks uh, or they feel they should be. The coaches themselves like, feel very undervalued. So he kind of knew that, well, he, these people need money, okay? And these guys, they have so much money. So yeah, let me just put this all together, right? So he just found a loophole. Um, uh, I wouldn't say it's a loophole. He sort of found a, a sneaky way of getting the kids into school and it's, it, and it's not an honest way. In fact, he calls it the side door. So, you know, you can't even go in through the main door, can I say? Just to tell you the extent of the lies, okay, um, he made uh, a girl out to be uh, someone who has won um, many uh, championships when the girl does not even play the sport. Uh, and he also talks about how he has built tennis courts uh, in the jungle of Cambodia. Like, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> if, if you're from Cambodia, have you heard about this thing about Rick Singer building tennis courts in the jungle of Cambodia? No, come on, right? Um, having said that, there were some people who rejected his help. Uh, after they seek him out um, initially and after talking to him they felt a little bit uncomfortable they decided to go with their gut and said like mm, no it doesn't sound you know you know what they say if it's too good to be true right so a lot there were people who rejected um, his uh, services um, so that's good to know um, there is this particular case that I really want to mention it and I found it so amusing um, there was a boy his name was Mateo his his dad wanted him to um, enter uh, one of the top universities so there was a side door okay so the sideways uh, to enter side door 
side door, not sideways. Okay, the side door to enter the university, and、um, it was to declare him、uh, or as a water polo player. This boy does not play water polo. Okay, so it's like so extreme,、um, and so they kind of like you know went through went through the. Trouble of doctoring photos of him、uh, as a water polo player. So you know, they kind of like I don't know, use Photoshop or something and put his face、uh, into a picture and make him look like a water water polo player. I mean, this is the extent that they're going. This costs money, mind you,、um, and it's interesting because throughout the entire process. You know, the father was a bit worried. He kept asking, "You sure this okay? This okay? If you got to ask something so many times, do you think it's okay? Are, are we going to be all right? Will we get caught?" And I mean, maybe this whole process took a couple of months, okay? And throughout that entire time, you keep asking, "Are we going to get caught? Is this okay? Do you think it's all right?" You already know that something is wrong, right? There were so many opportunities along the way for you to go like, oh well, you know what? Forget it. Maybe let's not do it this way. And another one is、um, a, a, a girl. I, her name was Elizabeth Bass, and、uh, she was,、uh, you know, she applied as an African American tennis player. And here's the thing, Eli- Eliza Bass. She's white, okay. She's Caucasian, and she does not play competitive tennis. I mean, the lies. It's oh, it's shocking. It's so scary.、Um, but anyway, I get. I guess you know, as I mentioned, the need to be seen as smart enough and to be able to enter a an Ivy League school just meant so much that they were willing to go. Uh, to such extent, and honestly, in some of these cases,、um, the kids did not even know this was happening. I mean, they were just following instructions.、Uh, I'm to go here. I'm to go there. I'm supposed to fill in the form this way, and that was all they did. I guess in some ways they did know what they were doing because, hey, you know you're lying, right? How can you write that you are an African American when you must know that you're not? The kind of wealth that we're talking about is. Stratospheric. That was the word that was used to describe the kind of money that these people have on themselves. You know, half jokingly say, "Families without private jets need not apply." So, if you have seen the,、um, the documentary, or I'm sure you've read about it in, in the news as well,、um, you have some really big names. Felicity Huffman.、Uh, she's an actress who is married to. And another actor, William,、uh, William H Macy. They're both very successful, really big names in Hollywood and on TV. With Felicity Huffman, and I, I think she was really,、um, she was like a parent,、um, some like she was super duper insecure for her kids. I mean, like she wanted, she always kind of like I don't know if it's a, a sort of、um, ooh, I, I want to use the correct term. I don't. Whether it's a psychological or mental situation, okay, and I don't mean in a disrespectful way. I'm sorry if I use terms wrongly, but kind of like I feel she was so obsessed, okay, so drawn into giving her kids the best, and at the same time feeling like she's never doing enough. So Rick Singer took his time with her and really made her feel. So bad if she did not do this. I mean, it's sad that he has chosen to use his skills, his、um, his intelligence, and his you know his his capabilities in such a way. But honestly, you you can tell that this guy he's smart, he's good, he really knows how to manipulate someone. Honestly, I believe the kids have the capacity to make it into a good school on their own without the help. Of、um, uh, Rick Singer, but he still managed to、um, persuade her to, you know, use his service. And、um, yeah, as you guys know, she was found guilty, and I believe she had to serve some time、uh, in jail. One of the ways that was recommended by、uh, Rick Singer to sort of like、uh, work the system,、uh, basically to cheat, was to get the kids diagnosed with some learning disabilities. And that makes me so angry because when when you are、um, certified to have some、uh, learning disability,、uh, you get some concession during exams. So you may get extra time、uh, to finish your your exam papers. And 
uh, and, and, and some, some other little advantages to help you, right? So it's kind of like to compensate for your learning um, disability. And I'm really angry because there are kids who really need it that extra 20 minutes. Now, if everybody's getting that extra 20 minutes, what difference does it make anymore to those who really need it? So this is one thing that really upset me. And they're like paying a lot of money to, I don't know if they're real doctors or, you know, who's, I reckon it's probably someone who um, is part of the whole scam, okay? And that Rick Singer would recommend, okay, go check, go see this doctor or go find a doctor who's willing to diagnose your child as having uh, some form of learning disability. So that this is one thing that really upsets me so much and so unfair. So that's basically all the things that I, I read about and that kind of like hit me hard, okay? Because as a teacher, as a tutor, I know I, I want every kid to have a fair chance and it, to see how people with money kind of like abuse the system and get, you know, even more advantage uh, more advantages than they already have it just riles me up it just makes me so mad and here's the thing okay um, I'm also wondering like if you have so much money what are you worried about I mean even if your kid never goes to school never goes to college doesn't go to university hey look at the Beckhams right it's not as if they're paving or paying their way for the kids to go to Oxford but the, you, you already have a head start you know your children already have a head start even if they do not do well in school there are other ways to you know be successful I mean I don't know maybe they might become uh, you know a successful designer a successful uh, business person you know it could be a F&B business you can open a restaurant a successful cafe I don't know there's just so many things you can do but to cheat and pay so much money just so you can go into college? I mean, what's that all about? I don't get it. Uh Olivia Jade, she is already a successful YouTube star, influencer, Instagrammer, whatever, okay? She's already making a lot of money. And to lie that she's in the rowing team, hello, that would hurt her nails, come on. Like, to lie that she's in a rowing, te rowing team just so that she could get into um, college, and that's just crazy because, I mean, like I said, Olivia Jade is already making tons of money. So that really is... I don't know, do you really need to go to university? I, I'm, I'm not sure. And I do know that her father actually got really angry because one of the teachers or the college admission, one of the officers, I think, um, sort of like maybe it's a student counselor guy, uh, person. And I think um, this person discovered that Olivia Jade has declared herself as a rowing, a member of a rowing team. I, I think there's, they don't even have rowing in school. And so he kind of called up to double check. And when Olivia Jade's um, dad found out, he got really angry and he confronted the person and said like, you know, stop looking into my daughter's application. Stop investigating into this thing. And that's just crazy. I and mean, that's how entitled um, they feel. And so here's my take, okay? Um, do watch the show on Netflix. I know I've said it before and I'm saying it again. Do watch it. Um, what's great about the show is because you actually get to see who's who, okay? It gives you an idea. I must say that the guy who played uh, Rick Singer in the in the show really does look like Rick Singer. So I think he's done a good job. So kudos to him. The thing is, the, the TV show only shows you the surface, like the, the process, what happens, okay? Uh, as in like what Rick Singer did. If you read the book, okay, that book gives you a lot of backstory to the people who are involved, okay? So that means you kind of... Uh, find out more about what this community, this super wealthy community, what they're like, what their expectations are, how they behave, and what their kids like, what is, um, what it's like going to school. Um, I'm not even talking about college yet, we're talking about just high school. What is it like? How much it costs? 
uh, you know, to enter these schools and what is expected of them. So um, the book really does a great job. I mean, I enjoyed it so much. It really creates a very clear picture for me, um, the kind of people and the kind of community um, that they are living in and why they behave, to a certain degree, why they behave the way they do. Money doesn't buy you everything and uh, at some stage you know you've got to deal with who you really are and if you keep pretending keep putting up appearances eventually you will be found out okay I guess that's it for this episode thank you so much for watching I know I rambled on quite a bit this time around but there was like so much that I wanted to share with you and I finally found the time to record this for you so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please remember to listen to The Ninja. Please like, share, subscribe. Um, and uh, yeah, until I see you again, remember to be kind and be brave. Take good care of yourself now. Bye-bye.